Welcome back to another episode of Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. We have finally got to the area of the series where I think that it's going to get about as exciting as cancer can get, which is not exciting. Uh, but uh, it is in some ways, maybe a better way than saying exciting is, is we start to provide a lot of information that hopefully will give a lot of hope. That is at least my goal. So in 2015, research was done years and years and years and years before this. But in 2015, Thomas Seafried, uh, Dr. Thomas Seafried up at Boston College, professor of biochemistry, published a paper called Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. This is a true paradigm shift in how we look at cancer. I don't think I can underscore how much different this is at looking at how cancer initiates and propagates and needs to be addressed. It is groundbreaking. Now, what's interesting is if you read this paper, this is just the abstract. Cancer is widely considered a genetic disease involving nuclear mutations and oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. This view persists despite the numerous inconsistencies associated with the somatic mutation theory, a theory that we have now gone over quite in detail. In contrast to the somatic mutation theory, emerging evidence suggests that cancer is a mitochondrial metabolic disease. According to the original theory of Otto Warburg, let's zoom out. Otto Warburg is a Nobel laureate. He was a German scientist during, I believe, World War I, World War II. He is coined for the discovery of what they now call the Warburg effect, which we're going to talk about in grave detail at nauseum. There's going to be a lot to talk about with the Warburg metabolism and Warburg. The findings are reviewed from nuclear cytoplasm transfers, experiments that relate to the origin of cancer. The evidence from these experiments is difficult to reconcile with the somatic mutation theory, but is consistent with the notion that cancer is primarily a mitochondrial metabolic disease. So let's take a look at what they did. So this section of this paper is called Normal Cytoplasm Suppresses Tumor Genesis in Cell Cybrids. So the, the highlighted portion is that basically they found that when a normal cytoplasm, aka the inside the cell plasma membrane, but outside of the nucleus, that area, which I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll show on, on a uh, diagram, which contains mitochondria and other organelles from non-tumorgenic cells could suppress the malignant phenotype of tumor cells. Although these observations were not linked to Warburg's theory, the findings question the dominant role of the nucleus in the origin of tumor genesis. So what they did was they took normal cells and normal cells create other normal cells when they divide. However, tumor cell, when it divides, it will create more tumor cells. So what they did was if they're if this was a genetic problem where all the genes are in the nucleus, they took the a tumor nucleus and put it in a normal cytoplasm. When it divided, we got normal cells. However, when they took a healthy nucleus and put it on the disease cytoplasm, when it divides, you have tumor cells. So how does that make sense whatsoever if cancer is truly a primarily genetic disease? It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense at all. It means there's something else that's going on. And what's theorized is that the Clearly, there are gene mutations in tumors. We talked about that at nauseum, 10, up to 10,000 in a single tumor. But what's happening is, is the gene mutations are actually downstream from the primary insult, which is mitochondrial dysfunction, which we're, we talked a lot about in this channel. We're going, to, we're going to zoom in on exactly how it happens for cancer initiation. I think this is probably a good place to stop for this particular video because we're going to get into more of Warburg metabolism and how it is the dominant likely initiator of cancer. And that kind of gets into some heavy biology, biochemistry, cell biology. And I'd like to start fresh with that. Um, so just let this sink in. Normal cells produce normal cells. Tumor cells produce tumor cells. However, a tumor nucleus with a normal cell around it makes normal cells. How does that make the genetic theory of cancer make any sense? It's not a genetic problem. It's a mitochondrial problem. It's a, it's a problem that initiates with the problems in bioenergetics from the mitochondria, which is where energy in the, in the cells produced. Those distressed mitochondria produce the environmental conditions that lead to cancer. And we're going to walk through this and to say nauseating sounds bad, but in very, very deep detail. And I hope that you stick with me through this process. Until next time.